coming in the door? <laughs> Is he? Okay. We'll, do, we'll wait just a moment for him. I was going to say we go ahead and pray. Um, Pastor, apparently uh, Seth and his wife are having another baby. <laughs> and uh, from what I hear, it's another girl. So that'll be the third little girl. So I guess he's on its way up there. He likes those grandbabies. So hallelujah. <laughs> I don't have any yet. Looks like June 13th is communion. The, this says there will be no, uh, was there a men's Bible study Thursday? This says no men's Bible study this Thursday, Jeff? We will reevaluate the next Wednesday. Okay, so all that gets canceled. No Bible study on Tuesday. I tell you, why don't we go ahead and start? Let's go ahead and stand up, everybody. Let's open with prayer. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, here we are again on Sunday to, uh, to come together and praise you and worship you. And thank you for all the things that you do in our lives. Thank you for all the blessings. Thank you for the blessing uh, to Brother David, this new little baby girl. Um, we thank you for all the rain that you've given us here in this farming community. And we praise you, God. We praise you for everything that you do in our lives. We praise you for your mercy. We praise you for loving us. We praise you most of all for sending Jesus to die for us. In Jesus' name, the congregation says, Amen. Amen. All right. Today, we are going to be blessing the Lord. We're going to open with a song that's called 1,000 Reasons to Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, may we be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Your rich and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the Lord oh my soul Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing. The end draws near, and my time has come. Still my 
my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forever more, forever more. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh, oh my soul, worship his holy like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name, yes I'll worship your holy name, Lord I'll worship your holy Come on up here, Mike. <laughs> All right. So if, if I'm right, the next thing on the, <laughs> the menu is responsive reading. All right. <laughs> Psalm 1, 103, 1 through 8. We're going to actually going to be reading this again. You know what? Rather than do this responsive reading here, at the beginning of my message, we're going to be reading all 22 verses of Psalm 103. So let's go ahead and move forward with the next hymn, our next song, the next, uh, yeah, let's go in with the next song, because when it, the first part of my message is we're going to read the entire Psalm 103, so rather than doing it twice, we're going to go ahead and move forward. Amen. No problem with that. Let's sing a song. This is called Rushing Wind. It's a, by a uh, singer back in the 80s who died, unfortunately, in a, a uh, plane crash. But a lot, quite often in the Bible, it talks about the Holy Spirit as the rushing wind. And our bodies are temples. We house Jesus Christ within us, all that follow Jesus Christ. So let's decree and declare out for the rushing wind to blow through us and clean out stuff that doesn't need to be in us. As the Bible says, search my heart, O Lord, know what is true. If there be any wicked ways in me, remove those ways. Create in me a clean heart and a right spirit. And I'll hide my word in, in my heart, your word in my heart, that I may not sin against you. So here we go. Rushing wind. You may not know this one. I think you guys will like this. Here we go. Rushing wind blow through this tent. Blowing out the dust within, come and breathe your breath upon me, for I've been born again. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I surrender. Take me where you want to go. Plant me by your living water. Plant me deep so I can grow. Jesus, you're the one who sets my spirit me, Lord, glorify your holy name through me. Separate me from this world, Lord. Sanctify my life for you. Daily change me into your image. Help me bear good fruit every day. Every day you're drawing closer. Trials come to test my faith. But when all is said and done, Lord, you know it's been worth the wait. Here we go again now. Jesus. Jesus. 
pass You're the one who sets my spirit free Use me, Lord, glorify Your holy name through me Sing that again one more time Jesus, you're the one who sets my spirit free within come and breathe your breath upon me for I've been born again thank you Lord hallelujah There were not railroad cars and railroad tracks. Yes, sir. Yeah. You read my book, didn't you? I went to the trusty kids book, and I found Thomas the Train book. For those of you who know anything about Thomas the Train, and what does it say up here about it? Thomas and friends. Ha <laughs> ha. There was my connection with Jesus when I started reading about Thomas and his friends. See, I have all these little railroad cars here. Thomas and friends. It made me think of a group that I do some work in called Emmaus. And y'all have heard me talk about Emmaus before. And we have something in Crisio, uh, which was the original Emmaus. Um, mm -hmm. You found Thomas? Good job. And you found a caboose. Good deal. All right. Thomas in all of these studies about Thomas and his friends, all of these railroad cars, there are three different train engines here because the engines are friends. And in our studies in Emmaus and Crisio, we learn a little saying that we say all the time, and it says to make a friend, be a friend, and bring a friend to Christ. So, of course, that sent me to study in of, all right, where did they get that from in Scripture? And I looked it up on my trusty Google, all of the different things that you can find out about friends. And one verse just really seemed to say what I wanted to say. John 15, 14 says, you are my friends 
if you do what I command you. Now, how does that relate to Vacation Bible School? Do any of you know what a disciple is? A what? A disciple is actually a good person. A disciple in a Christian faith is a follower of Christ. Do you know that you guys are all disciples? You are all disciples of Christ. I see the trains on my phone. You are all disciples of Christ. And I'm going to give you all a task for this evening. Because Vacation Bible School is starting this evening. I want you all to make a friend, be a friend, and bring a friend to Christ. So I want every one of you not only to make friends tonight when you're at Vacation Bible School and be friends within your class group, because sometimes when we get into studies and we get to having fun out in rec and sports and get wet and all that kind of stuff, we get a little rowdy. I want you to be a friend and, and be a good disciple, but I also want you to bring a friend to Christ. So I want every one of you, I'm challenging you, <coughs> to bring someone with you tonight. Bring a friend to Vacation Bible School, and then you will be the friend that Jesus says. You are my friends if you do what I command. And the greatest commandment was to go out and make disciples of all nations, to bring friends to Christ. And that's how a railroad track with Thomas the Train reminded me that we are all friends, that we need to be a friend, make a friend, and bring a friend to Christ. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Austin got entranced with the, the trains up here. Does anybody want to pray today? Me. All right. <clears throat> Everybody fold your hands. Come on over, Tim. All right. Austin, I'm going to let you go first. You send me first. Fold your hands. Austin's prayer is coming from her heart, and she's talking to Jesus silently and doing a lots of smiling up here. All right? Because he hears you. He hears those prayers. Cameron? Dear God, we help each other and have fun. And we look at shopping today. Amen. Lord God, thank you for this group of kids that are here today. We ask you to, to be with us tonight through Vacation Bible School as um, many, many children come into this uh, worship center, and we ask that you give us the fruits of the Spirit that we need to go throughout the night to deal with the other adults, to deal with the children, and just to make it, as, as Cameron said, to make it a fun event for our kids and let each and every one of them be touched with the grace of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for touching the trunk only for 
from you, that you would watch over them, that they would enjoy your love, that they are filled with your spirit, even from their youth and their childhood, that they are blessed, they are filled with joy and encouragement, that they know you in a very young age. We commit them into your hands and pray for your watchful care and blessing over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and stand again, please. We're going to sing again. This is another song. Same thing, same. Bless the Lord, O my soul. the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy, holy name. He has done great things. He has done done great things, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his Let's do it one more time. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his be seated. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Let me see if I can find a place to sit there. So we're, I know, it's, it, you feel like you're in a Catholic church this morning. Stand up, sit down, stand up. <laughs> Uh, if we're going to stand again. We're going to read aloud. We're going to stand for the reading of his word. Psalm 103. That's what I said. <laughs> so if you didn't get your workout yet, you're getting your, you, this, is, this is Fitbit this morning. <clears throat> if, you, if, if it's all right, if you don't stand, it'll be all right. But we're going to read Psalm 103, the entire psalm. And we'll read it together. Bless the Lord, O my soul. 
and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, on those who fear him, in his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant, to those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. You know, I learned only recently that not everybody thinks the same way I do. Now, before you think that I'm foolish, of course I don't think that everybody has the same opinion that I have. Of course we all think differently, have different viewpoints. What I mean is, not everybody experiences the thought process the same way that I assumed was common to us all. You see, in my mind, there is an ongoing inner monologue, my inner thoughts that are being verbalized silently in my mind. I've heard it referred to as self-talk. Now, no matter what it's called, I was shocked to learn that not everybody experiences this. When I'm alone reading, I'm reading the words silently in my mind. When I walk away from a conversation, that conversation is replayed in my head, and very often it results in me having to offer an apology because I realize as I replay that conversation in my head, I hear myself saying things. I go, oh, I just realized that was probably very hurtful. And I need to go back, and I need to correct that because I, I realize that I need to apologize for what I said. And I re that realization comes because the conversation has played back in my head in that ongoing inner thought process. But apparently, for a lot of people, this whole idea, it's a foreign concept. Now, I found this subject really interesting in light of the fact that our text this morning, Psalm 103, is David preaching a sermon to himself. You might not have realized this as we read the psalm. This is David talking to himself. 
when he says, oh, my soul, this is him, as if he's talking in a mirror. He's saying, David, oh, my soul. He's talking to himself. Now, this psalm is very, almost certainly, written later in his life. It's a rich symphony of praise, testifying to a life lived in intimate fellowship with God through soaring heights and terrifying valleys, miraculous victories and devastating losses. God has proven to be ever faithful and ever true. And we, like David, can admonish ourselves with this psalm as if looking in a mirror saying, Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Hey, you, I'm talking to you. You need to pay attention. Most of you know, Ken Bogey passed out t-shirts that read, God blessed America. It's time America blessed God. So, Mike, God blessed you. It's time you blessed God. We throw around that word bless a lot, often in trivial ways. Somebody sneezes, God bless you, right? Pretty trivial. Or to soften an insult. Why, that poor girl, she's as ugly as a mud fence, bless her heart, <laughs> right? So we take the word bless and we use it in ways that, that really kind of cheapen the meaning of the word. But today, I mean, David understands the weightiness of the word blessing. And this morning, I want to lay aside those cheap old ideas and grab hold of blessing as something that's far more significant. It really is something that means something very powerful. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Kneel, worship. Offer up your body as a living sacrifice. What could I possibly offer God but myself, wholly given to him as he gave himself for me? All that is within me, bless his holy name. In nine other places, six of them in Psalm 119, David speaks of either seeking God or praising God with his whole heart. All in. Nothing held back. This is Texas Hold'em. All in. Everything in me. All that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. In our own lives, there's no benefit in looking backwards. You say, I'm not who I was yesterday. I, I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm changed. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it, there is a benefit in looking backward at what God has done. We learn from looking back at who God is, what he has done, and remembering. We're called to remember what God has done. Mike, God has blessed you. Now I'm going to list some of the ways which he has blessed you. He has forgiven all your iniquities. You see, a sin is a single act. Iniquity is the underlying character flaw that lies behind the sin. Don't raise your hand, but have you ever had to go back to God and ask God for forgiveness for a sin that just yesterday you were before God asking for forgiveness? And maybe the day before that, and on. You see, there's an underlying condition that's in need of forgiveness and cleansing. That condition is called iniquity. And how we deal with iniquity is an entirely different message. At the moment, we have a singular purpose, and that is to proclaim God, true and every man a liar. Though I stumble and fall, God remains faithful. Bless the Lord who has forgiven all your iniquities. He has healed all your diseases. Now, 
If you or someone close to you is this very moment suffering from a chronic disease, and I know we have members in our family who are suffering chronic diseases, who have close members of our family who are suffering chronic diseases, please hear me. God sees you. God hears your prayers. God knows your pain. But by faith, we affirm the goodness of God in the integrity of his word and the truth of this declaration that it is God who heals all your diseases. And just as iniquity runs deeper than sin, this declaration that God heals all our diseases runs deeper than the diseases that afflict our bodies today. Sickness exists because we live in a broken, fallen world. Jesus gave his life to redeem us from all of the consequences of the fall, including disease. So when I stand and testify that God heals all my diseases, I'm not doing this in order to obtain what I want from God. This isn't, you know, okay, if I proclaim, okay, God heals all my diseases. Has he healed all my diseases yet? You know, I'm not doing this to get something from God. I don't preach messages that tell you how to get what you want from God. God is not a bubblegum machine. You can't just put a quarter in and turn the crank and expect to get a, a ball of gum from God. It does, you know, it just doesn't work that way. We ask, we trust, and we affirm the goodness of God, and we trust in him in every circumstance of our life. And just as I believe on the authority of his word, that he forgives all my, my iniquities, I will say to my soul, bless the Lord who heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. In some translations, and I think it's probably a better translation, he redeems your life from the pit. With this one phrase, David calls to remembrance Psalm chapter 40, in a time when he cried out to God in desperation from the bottom of a horrible pit. In Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 and 2, David says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me. It means God, it means God leaned down. He inclined to me. He listened to me. He heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. So if David wrote this late in life, he could look back on countless times that God had rescued him in hopeless situations from certain destruction. And so now as I stand looking in a mirror, figuratively speaking, as I'm looking in a mirror, preaching this message to myself, Psalm 40 is also my testimony. God inclined unto me. He heard my cry and he rescued me from a pit. He set my feet on a solid rock and established my goings. He established my steps. I too can say with David, bless the Lord who redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Now here I want you to set aside any thought you have of wearing God's loving kindness and tender mercies like an adornment, like a piece of jewelry to improve your appearance or make you look like royalty, like a, like a tiara or a crown. See, the same word means crown. It, it comes from the word that means circle or to encompass or to surround. It's the same word that was used when David was surrounded by Saul's men. And they sure weren't there to put a crown on his head. And I would much rather be surrounded by God's loving kindness than merely wear it as a crown on my head. Now, if you're a visual person like I am, 
and because we have technology now, we can sort of envision things. You can picture like this three-dimensional globe of protection of his extravagant goodness. So if you're surrounded by his loving kindness and tender mercies, picture it like this three-dimensional force field that completely surrounds you. We are crowned, we are surrounded by his tender mercies and loving kindness. We are, or another word that you might picture that is because it's encircled, we are hugged by his tender mercies and loving kindness. All of these are captured in that word. These are two of my favorite words in scripture, actually. Loving kindness and tender mercies. Those two words wash over me like a hot shower at the end of a long day. Loving kindness and tender mercies. You know, God has created us this way. He actually designed our physiology to appreciate this. When you give, receive, and this is the product of study, when you give, receive, or even so much as witness an act of kindness, your brain is flooded with feel-good chemicals. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins get flooded into your brain. And all it takes is either giving, receiving, or even witnessing an act of kindness. And these chemicals get released in your brain. We are hardwired to appreciate kindness. God built us that way. Sadly, we often fight back against it. We harden our hearts. And in the last days, the love of many will grow cold because iniquity will abound. But we are physiologically inclined to appreciate kindness. And it's his loving kindness and tender mercies that we love and we appreciate. Oh, the imagine the delight of knowing that you are surrounded, you're crowned, you're encircled by his loving kindness and tender mercies, by the supernatural, protective, loving kindness of God. The mercy of God goes beyond mere pardon. It's not like some letter that gets handed down from the governor saying, okay, you're, it's, it's canceled, the debt's canceled, but it's, it's without feeling, it's, it's, it's cold and indifferent, okay, you know, bam. No, it's, it's far more personal than that. It was far more personal to Jesus when he on the cross, through blood and tears, cried out to Telestai, it is finished. It's, it's like the debt has been paid, it's done. To appreciate the tender mercies of God, you have to recognize the nurturing, compassionate quality it's comforting to know that it's administered with tenderness and compassion. David also used these two words together, one other place that I know. It's in Psalm chapter 51. And David is repenting with tears and with great sorrow for the terrible sins of adultery and then taking it a step further, not just adultery, but trying to cover up his adultery by having her, Bathsheba's husband killed in battle to cover up his sin. The opening words of his prayer are these. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. In his repentance, he appealed to God's loving kindness and tender mercies. So now he, here he is later in life, reminding his soul to remember the benefits that he has received from God. Bless the Lord who surrounds you, who hugs you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. There's a story recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 14, an event that of course David is familiar with. And it sheds light on this verse. King Saul foolishly commanded that none of his troops could eat any food all day because they were to avenge Saul on his enemy until evening. 
Imagine the foolishness of this commandment. Okay, you're to fight all day long, but you can't have any food until the battle is won. Don't take any nourishment. Don't strengthen your body with any food until, this, until it's done. This is right there on par with the beatings will continue until morale improves. It's just about that intelligent. Keep fighting, but you can't get any nutrition to strengthen yourself in the fight. So that was the command that was given. Jonathan didn't get the memo. And so he's out there fighting, and so he and his men are in, in a wood, and they see honey on the ground. And he's got a rod in his hand, and so he touches the end of his rod to the honey, and he puts some of the honey in his mouth. And his mouth is satisfied with the honey. He satisfies my mouth with goodness so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. All it took was some of that honey, and Jonathan's eyes were brightened. Can you imagine? You know how it is. You've seen somebody who is exhausted. They've, they've, their energy is spent, and the eyes get dull. You know what I'm talking about. They're exhausted, spent. The eyes become dull and weakened. And immediately his eyes were brightened. That glisten returned to his eyes. He was strengthened. His youth was renewed like the eagles. He was, is like he's, you know, and immediately his men were horrified because they knew the command. They knew that Saul had said that anybody who eats until the battle is won is, is to be killed. And so they, give, they tell Jonathan about this. And in verse 29, Jonathan says, My father has troubled the land. See, I pray you, how my eyes have been enlightened because I tasted a little of this honey. All it took was just a taste of this honey and all oh, this, this resurgence of energy and brightness. And all it, it was that there's this vigor that returned to him. A taste of honey. His strength was revived. His eyes became bright. And he had the strength to return to the battle. He could soar with the eagles. God knows how to give us just what we need at just the right time. Bless the Lord who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now in these first five verses, we have with David admonished our souls about just some of the ways that God has blessed us. It goes on, in the next section, David speaks, oh, were you thinking that I was going to take and, and, and you know, sort of go break out all 22 verses? I, I'm not going to do that. We'd be here a very long time. And my wife has already reminded me that the best messages are the shortest ones. Um, so in the next section, David speaks about how God has blessed his people, Israel, now, if you need a sermon to have three points, then here, I'll give you this message in three points. Um, all these benefits can be described as falling in one of three categories. Those three categories are pardon. God has pardoned our iniquities. Purification. God cleanses us from sin and sickness. And pity. God knows our frame and remembers that we are dust. All of these benefits that were listed in the first five verses and those that are in the next section. The first section is, so it's also, you can look at it in these sections. The first section is the ways that God has blessed David personally. The next section is the ways that God has blessed the nation of Israel and all of in his people and the ways that God has, has admitted them. And all of these blessings can be viewed as falling in these categories of pardon, purification, and pity. But in the last section, it expands from personally to the nation to all of creation. That he calls on all of creation, the angels, all of the created order to cry out to God, to bless the Lord. That everything, all of creation, to cry out to God in, in blessing. And it's in Psalm 103. And with this, we'll close the message, verses 20 through 22. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. 
Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Would you stand as we close in prayer? Instruct our hearts, Lord, that we would not forget all your benefits, that we would remember these things, that we would not just move forward in ignorance, forgetting all of the ways that you have blessed us throughout our lives, that you have pardoned our iniquities, you have healed our diseases, that you have surrounded us with loving kindness and tender mercies, that you have satisfied our mouths with good things so that our strength and our youth is renewed like the eagles. You have rescued us from the pit. All of these things that you have done throughout our lives and we honor you. Let us, Lord, now bless you. We surrender our lives to you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless your holy name. We worship you. We love you, Lord God. We give our lives to you in full surrender, loving you, blessing you, surrendering to you fully, holding nothing back. All of this in Jesus' name, amen. We close with the song again. Bless the Lord, O my soul. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You are dismissed.